It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Retroid 5 Plus Pro Edition. This is a Super Nintendo with HDMI functionality. In my previous videos, we have talked about, let's say, different kind of Super NES HDMI devices. And the reason I picked it up, because it was not really cheap, but I just wanted to see here, is it any good and is maybe worth picking up? Nevertheless, this is like a Super Nintendo alone, but there are some possibilities when it comes to using different games on this machine. Retroid also provides kind of, let's say, conversion kits. So it seems to be that it's compatible with these things. So in other words, you can even like play some Famicom or NES, Mega Drive, GBA, Game Boy Color on this machine. The device itself does have the option to play all kinds or different kind of regions when it comes to the games that we're going to try out. Express ratio is an option, so we can play by 4x3 and 16x9, and it also includes an HD and RCA output. Easy inject button, so I'm curious how it will be, because that's going to be like a pain in the ass with these things sometimes. <laughs> So let's do a quick unboxing and let's see what we're going to get inside the package. So this thing comes including everything that we're going to need and that also includes two controllers. But like the bug already said, is that we do have the option to basically use original controllers. The form factor is something different. It's not like a ripoff from the original system that I've seen before. It's a completely different model. I personally really like it, but you've got like this massive power button, reset button, and of course the eject. So the cover itself, I must say that it feels very sturdy, like very nice, like it's a very thick plastic and it is not like the cheap feel that we've seen before. At the back we're going to get ourselves like the sticker of Retroid and some information about it. For example, this model is the C51HD. The original RSA region this thing has is NTSC. We're going to play it, so try just to see if we can play some PAL games on it. But I think it will have some limitations. But they, just check it out, we're going to have like the switch over here, the P and the N for region. The old school signal out HDMI with the express ratio we detail before and here like the input for the DC that is just a micro USB so I'm guessing this thing will run on 5 volts. And at the front we're going to get ourselves the two controller ports that we can also use with the rigid controls that I really wanted to try. Alright so let's see we do have like all the cables and huh, surprisingly you're going to give us like nice quality HDMI cable. The controls are completely different like custom design so far you can see. An old school cable for the AV out, USB, and we're also going to get a power supply. And they sent me the right one for once. No like adapter needed. But let's see, we're just going to get ourselves a USB 5 volt thing. There's a 2000 milliamp, so nothing very fancy. We do also include the Super Retro games. This is a multi game card that so far I know only works on the system from Retroid or the similar products. Nevertheless, this is a quite interesting one. We're going to take a close look at it because this thing is very awesome. We have like some 8 bit functionalities for a 60 bit system. And last but not least, I also need to include in this video the toilet paper manual. Yeah, there was nothing much for information here, just basic explanations, but yeah, it's absolutely garbage. Makes no sense. Let's talk about the controller, because oh boy, this is quite interesting. So we don't have the traditional Super NES knockoff controller anywhere. No, 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 not at all. Normally we do have like this flat controller, like the original one, but we do have like some shape in here. So it's more comfortable to play. The overall quality of the buttons, like Retroid, is more like this premium brand in my opinion. It's a little bit better than all the other cheap ones I've tested out, and it doesn't disappoint with the controller. We have like select start, rip rise button. We do have like the hollow button and the normal button over here. And I must say the touch itself, it feels just great. The D-pad itself feels kind of sturdy, it doesn't have like a very long travel, but doesn't matter, it's not a bad thing. Then we have like the shoulder buttons, also these have a very nice touch. The controller, yeah, the plug itself looks slightly different plastic, looks in my opinion a little bit more cheap than the original one, but beside that it also comes with a very long cable, a very thick cable. So in general, first impression is very positive with the controller itself. So like I mentioned before, we're going to test out the Super Retro Game System. We're going to try out Star Fox for the FX chip, a US game, Fate of Fury. We're going to try some Super Mario Kart. Then we have like the Dragon Ball Z Japanese game. And of course, I wanted to try out the Game Boy Player. So that's basically what we're going to do for the first try, just to see how everything works. Does it work? And how does it will work with all of these different cartridges? But before we're going to test it, how are they fitting inside the machine? So let's put in the cartridge and I'm gonna say like the entrance for the slot is absolutely amazing and also the ejector works very well. 
you need to put some force in, but okay. So let's put a power game in it. A little bit more difficult to put in, but same story. Oof, fly. Oh yeah, that works fine. Let's try the game war. Okay, it's the same thing. The super retro. Okay, it's kind of funny that this thing has more problem because the shell is a little bit thicker. Same story. All right, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to get this out. Then we do have like the flash card. And then we have like the multi-game card. I must say every single one of them will fit in beside this super retro game because you can see like it's completely different kind of shells, thicker material. It doesn't fit in perfectly. But again, like all the other ones, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so the first problem I noticed is when you're going to put it on the original 16x9 special ratio switch, we're going to have like the weirdest thing. So this is just a Japanese game, boots up without any problem. But you can see there is no image whatsoever. Sometimes it just freezes in a certain image. But the weird thing is like when you're going to boot it up back into the 4x3 SPS ratio, you can switch it on the back. I've, show, I've shown you before. Sometimes it does just give you an image and it works without any hassle or any hassle. It's more like still giving some problems. Let's see if it's going to be booting up now. So we do have like sometimes it like tries to get into different resolution. The other problem I tried like different cables, different power supplies. You get like it flickers sometimes. Super annoying. But so far, the Japanese game seems to be working just fine besides having this weird thing. All right, so next up, let's try a little bit of Super Mario Kart. I just wanted to see how this works. It's a ball game, so maybe it would don't have any weird issues when it comes to screen flickering. But the unfortunate thing is it still does it. So there was nothing to do about this. I think it's going to have like a faulty product or this is just absolutely crap product in general. But doesn't matter, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to some more testing, just see like what kind of cartridges do to work with this. You know, the weird thing with the system is like it has a region switch, but it has been set to PAL. I'm playing a different kind of game. So it's kind of weird that the switch doesn't do basically anything at this small point. Normally would maybe get a message that this is not like the region that you should play it on. There is nothing, like it just boots up. Okay, so next thing I wanted to see if we can boot it up with the 6x9 on the different region. Maybe we didn't have the issue there. So let's boot it up and let's see what we're going to get here. Because it's unfortunate this thing does come with a lot of problems. And again, I don't know if this is going to be a filthy, a filthy, yeah, it's a filthy, it's a faulty one. Or it's going to be like a general problem. I don't want to get any screen, whatever. So this pick ratio is absolutely messed up. We're just going to leave it on the end function and let's play some games. But uh, it's a little bit bummer that the aspect ratio is messed up in combination with flickering because it seems to be that everything seems to be working just fine. Also, the controller is very nice. Oh man, that flickering is quite annoying. But let's try some other stuff. Next up, let's try a multi game card. Let's see if we do get any signal. Did I put it in right? Let's power it on. Which, by the way, the first time that does something doesn't boot up a multi-game card because most of the time these things will boot up multi-game cards. It's kind of weird. Doesn't do anything. What the hell is going on? Don't know why, but somehow it didn't boot up the first multi-game card. Whatever. It's absolutely like bullocks. But let's take a close look at some games here. If we can even boot up a game. All right. So let's see. Do we have like a zero? Whatever. Let's just boot up a game just to see if it even boots up the game in general. But so far, I can see it boots up without any hassle. Next thing I wanted to try is then we do have the possibility maybe to play on an EverDrive. And so far, I can see it does boot up the EverDrive itself without any problem. If it's going to boot up the game, that's a different story, of course. Let's give it a reset. Let's see if I can load up or reload up a game. Maybe it will work then. All right, so next up, just tried to load up a game through the EverDrive and it seems to be working just fine. 
No problem whatsoever. It's kind of funny, I just wanted to show you. So we're not going to be messing around with the assist ratio. Let's put it on 6x9 now. Let's see if we're going to even play. But see, instantly it's going to be freezing. So that's absolutely an issue. Let's put it back. And then we're going to get a black screen. Yeah, I just wanted to try it. But unfortunate. It worked with the game. Cartridge over here already. <laughs> but unfortunate, it doesn't work with the expert ratio. All right, so that's something we know. Let's go. Okay, so next up, let's try so Game Boy Classic. I did notice a lot of people were requesting in my previous videos if it can play some Game Boy or Passage Game Boy with a Super Game Boy, and what you can see, it plays without any hassle. So take a close look at the multi-game card that came with it, with the NES. And it's quite an interesting NES collection, if you ask me. So it's pretty damn cool that we do have like an extra 8-bit system implemented in this, or better said, it can play 8-bit. It's a little bit messed up, what you can see over here, so it's not perfect at all. Oh, there we have. I have no idea where the button was. But okay, so it was the same thing what we had with the previous Super NES, what we reviewed last year. So when it comes to the system, there are a lot of like different options. Unfortunately, I think the image is very crisp and clear when it comes to this. But yeah, the flickering and the broken SPS ratio. I wouldn't be surprised that this issue will be having with a lot of these systems. When you order one yourself, for example. So that's the reason I always like love to make these videos, just to check out if it's any good. But let's be honest, if you're going to pay some money for a device like this, they are not like really cheap. Retroid is normally like one of the better companies that make these, let's yeah, say, devices. It's unfortunate that we do get something like this inside of the Wicked Cave. Yeah. And for the final test, I wanted to check out some Star Fox. And you can really see some glitching in the beginning. So yeah, that is absolutely not a good sign. Okay, so next up I wanted to try the system with the original AV out. Fun story is like, there is no option to basically switch between SPS ratios, so that option was only like for the HDMI function. So we are stuck with the 60x9 if you're going to plug this thing with your composite inside your television. But there is no flickering whatsoever, so it seems to be that the normal port seems to be doing just fine. But let's play some games and let's see if it still flickers. Alright guys, so let's take a close look inside the machine. Now one thing is for sure, it's one big hot mess. Because, oh man, it's such a bummer. I was expecting so much from this thing. So cool they can actually play some Super Nintendo games on HDMI. And maybe in a different, better way than I did in the last year. But you can see like, even they're selling like more premium products. They still seem to be messing it up. <laughs> kind of funny if you think about it. Like, we're having this quality pass sticker. You can just stick your screwdriver in because it doesn't make any sense because nobody checked this thing because if you checked it you should like absolutely know instantly there was something wrong with this so let's here open up everything like it should be oh boy oh, i hate this when they do that so what you can see you need to be very careful opening it up because these <laughs> oh man look at this they just sold them the freaking cables straight into the oh man the led legs like this is absolutely crappy and like there was there should be like a different way to do this but it doesn't matter, like here we have like the mechanism for basically pushing it down. This is the mechanism for basically like lifting the cartridge. This is the plastic basically for guiding the 
it's a game cartridge inside of the machine that we do have like a better fit and you don't like wiggle the cartridge around when you try to put it in. It's quite a huge board that's inside of this machine. So the front PCB is made in 2017, so it's quite old. We have like two different micro switches. So there is not a lot of information here. So we need to remove the freaking spring if you want to get into the other part of the system. And um, yeah, I want to check out what's underneath when it comes to everything. So I think we need to remove it like this. Now we're very, very gentle. We can just lift it out. So there we go with the spring. So the mechanism they made for this is super simple to replace. So if it is going to get broken, you can just replace it instantly. If you can even find some freaking, <laughs> if you can find some, find some some spare parts for these things. So in the inside, we do can find some different chips over here. Quite interesting construction when it comes to the PCB. Here we have like the TCT975 chip in here. We do get like the TCT976 chip in here. And the final one is the TCT978. So it's quite interesting, cluster of all kinds of chips they are using inside this machine. I'm guessing this is basically for, yeah, I can say like emulating this or mimicking this thing, what it wants to play some Super NES. And also for the like NES function that this thing has capable of. Because the funny thing is if you're going to put the cartridge that you have normally inside your original Super NES. And yep, I tried it. This bloody thing doesn't do anything. If this thing works without any problems, I think it would be like a very cool thing to recommend. If you just want to get yourself like a Super NES with HDMI built in. The image quality, I can already tell you from the television, it's not bad at all. And yeah, normally I would do like a side-by-side -side comparison with the capture, but it's absolutely no go because the screen, yeah, I cannot even like switch with this express ratio and I cannot even like stand it. It's going to like flickering all the time. That's not like a great way to yeah, basically try it. I will try to contact them just to see what they were saying. Maybe they can send me a replacement so I can basically finish this video or better said like make an update, test it out and do more comparison with the original and the other system I'm having. For now, this is what you're going to get. Also a very great lesson because you can see like also here in the Wicked Cave, stuff goes like wrong, you know, like stuff doesn't like always goes. It doesn't come in and everything works perfectly. Quality control my ass. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family and it would be great to see you in the next video.